This week on the Greener Business Podcast, we are making a portable solar-powered iPod USB charger with an LED flashlight. You've probably seen these solar-powered fence and path lights around. They work fairly well, but I think we can get some more use out of them. This project was inspired by Instructables.com user Slashawn and his guide on making a handheld solar power supply. Here's what we're going to need. A solar-powered fence light was about $10 from our local hardware store. A simple Phillips screwdriver. A multimeter a soldering iron with some 0.022 diameter solder, an Altoids tin or some other similar case you have around, like an old cassette tape box, wire stripper, pair of good scissors or something that cuts well, three switches, a photo resistor which you might or might not need or want to have in this project, some wire, two rechargeable AA batteries, a female USB connector, one 4AA battery pack, tape or hot glue. Two things that are optional are Dremel and a Velcro cable organiser strap. Most of these items can be bought at Radio Shack or salvaged from some old electronics. OK, once you got everything, we can begin by opening up the solar fence light and detaching everything on the inside of the case, which is amazingly simple to do. All you need to do is unscrew the two screws connecting the battery and circuit board to the case. The solar panel can simply be popped out with a little force. The only thing that can give you a little trouble is removing the photoresistor. We ended up needing to just cut the wire leading to it and give up. However, we had a spare photoresistor that worked out just fine as a replacement. Once you have everything out, we can now replace the solar panel to circuit board wires with a new 3.5 to 4 inch wire. This can be easily done by desoldering the two wires or by cutting them off, then soldering the new wires back on. Afterwards, get a new 4 AA battery pack and additional batteries. Our local store didn't carry just two rechargeable AA's by themselves, only this pack of four that was specifically meant to be used with a solar path light but most any rechargeable AA will work. Now, the same thing as before with the solar panel, cut the old battery pack and wire away and attach the new battery pack. Even though there are now four AA hooked up, the LED light will still receive the same amount of voltage as before. Additionally, we're going to cut the LEDs off the board and extend them with about an inch of wire. That is all soldered up. We are going to add a mini slide switch to turn the lights on and off with. To do this, cut the left wire of each LED in half and use the mini slide switch to solder the four wires together. Now need a female USB connector to hook up into the batteries. You can get this from an old motherboard, USB hub, or in our case, a USB adapter. We only need the black and red wires attached to the USB port, so you can just tie the rest of the wires in a small bundle. With the battery pack, you can either solder the two power cables to connect to the USB port from the outside of the case, or from the inside of it. Then solder the other end to the USB port. There is one last thing which we would like to add on, which is a switch to make it so that the light can be controlled either manually or by the photoresistor, which is used to brighten the light when it becomes darker. To make this happen, we will need to insert a mini push button switch and another mini slide switch or something similar, along with two wires and the photoresistor. In the finished project, the push button switch will remain inside the Altoids tin because we are only going to be using it to hook up to the other mini slide switch. 
Hook the two blue wires on the circuit board to the push button switch and add two new wires attached to either side of the switch. With the one side of the slide switch, attach a side of the photoresistor to it. With the other side of the push button switch, solder one of the white wires to the slide switch and attach the other white wire to the unsoldered end of the photoresistor. That's it for the inside. However, we still need to make the case out of the Altoids tin. First, make sure that all your connections are protected with some kind of tape or glue. This will make it so there is no interference when placed inside the tin. For the Altoids container, we are going to need to have a hole for the LEDs to shine through, a hole for the slide switch hole for the LED switch, another hole for the photoresistor switch, an area for the wires from the solar panel to exit from the case, USB port and a round hole for the photoresistor. The position of the cuts are really just up to you, but we found this design to work quite well. For the flashlight, we are going to start by taking the bottom half of the original container that came with the solar light and cut about a 1.5 inch by 5 8 inch rectangle. You can use a Dremel or something that is similar for the cut. On the Altoids tin, you also need to remove a small rectangle that is about 1 inch by a half inch from the front of the case. After that is done, organise the electronics inside the case and size everything up, drawing cutting marks on the tin. Now start snipping! In order to get a hole to put the solar cell through, use a Dremel, drill or nail. After you have all the holes cut, you can begin fitting everything in the case. A good thing to do is use a voltage meter to make sure that the USB port is outputting 5 volts and the LEDs are functioning along with the photoresistor before you start gluing them. Once you are done gluing or taping the solar panel, you have the choice of placing one of those Velcro straps that are mostly used for organising wires around the case, giving it a tighter seal. Do one more test to make sure that your USB device is receiving voltage from the rechargeable solar powered AA batteries, that if you switch on the LED switch, the light turns on, and that if the other second switch is turned on, the light gets controlled by the photoresistor. The total cost for parts in this project is around $15. Remember to recycle or reuse all your unused parts and packaging, and enjoy! For more information about this project, go to greenerbusinessshow.org. To contact us, email contact at greenerbusinessshow.org. Have a great week!